yeah. person with their with it in their luggage. You it's know. faster <laughs> than freight. <clears throat> yeah. And carry it. And that was one of the well, one of the many many challenges of the pandemic was our supply chain was very right. constrained. And it, it's a challenge we face in the future as we work in further west in the Central Pacific. Uh, and some of this equipment still has a two-month lead time. And and I guess it's manufactured all over the place, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, where is <coughs> this computer down here is from Portugal. I don't know where. Oh, actually, I think I do. The manipulator is Overland Park, Kansas. That's our service center, right? That sounds like crap. Um, and then all of our video signals on the boat, every monitor you're looking at, all of our recordings, every single video signal and audio signal is being processed by a Ultrix video audio router made by Ross Video in Ontario, Canada. Oh, wow. Was that yep. a shout out to a Canuck? Yep. Mm -hmm. I think so. And it's a fantastic product from a great company. Great. And they just That's a plug for a Canada Day tomorrow, Ed. Yeah, it, yeah, July 1. Coming up, tick, 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 tick. Uh, Ross just signed a huge deal with the Canadian government, too. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that's really impressive about the control van here that you don't really see when you're watching from home is uh, just the complexity of the systems in here. And even, I think it's so cool, the, the audio system that we're all hooked into. Um, we we can like toggle to the different seats. Um, and you're hearing us over the science party line, the SPL. That's why I like to call the viewers the science party land folk. But everything in here is, is pretty nifty. Ed, you probably helped put it together, didn't you? Uh, yeah. Uh, started with bare vans. Uh, we had uh, the carpet on the wall and the flooring and the electrical, and that was it. Then we hired somebody to come and put all the HVAC together. Hmm. Should fire that guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why? What's wrong with the HVAC? Dan put it in. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm quite comfortable. <laughs> I've got a little wise. cool in here right now. I'll turn it down. Um, Ross video I was telling you about in Ontario this just received a, uh, I think it's a federal government investment of $49 million to develop cloud-based products. That'll add about 2,000 Canadian jobs. Hmm. Oh, cool. And uh, yes, folks, we, we did our COVID test. We've been out at sea together for six days. We've done our COVID tests, we all passed, and masks are optional. Yay. Yeah. We also have this really high-tech piece of equipment. That was I was looking for that the other day. Where it. was it? Ed had it back by the broom. I didn't have it. Somebody <laughs> found it, and <laughs> I Rennie, saw it back you got to explain brooms. it for us. Well, before Magic we had the wand. excellent telestrator in the back row. Oh, <laughs> right. Uh, the scientists would be asking for stuff, and I'd have to say, you mean this? <laughs> oh, my god! You mean you want that slug? <laughs> that can go in the Museum of Nautilus. Right. It's still a backup for when the telestrator, yeah. well, when the front row can't figure out how to re-switch <laughs> the telestrator in. When they start throwing cupcakes on the, on the, <laughs> the screen, yeah. they get banned. You the telestrator is uh, pretty I cool. I just deleted most of that stuff, yeah. so we're the end of a dive or one restart of the telestrator away from... Losing all the goofiness. Aww. It does get quite silly. So the so for folks who haven't seen the control van, we got the the pilots, nav, video engineer at the front row. Then we've got data science. Um, this spot here in the the science communications, and then we've got a an extra spot on the side on the back row here. And um, when the scientists are sitting in the back row and need to explain something to the pilots. The telestrator allows them to um, use their finger or a, a stylus. And oh, I, you know, we're doing a scent. I could put it on uh, scent three oh, and show somebody. Yeah. Uh, scent three. Ooh, 
I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> I'd like that, Ed. Uh, it's playtime as Hurt comes up. Let's do it. Don't break it. Don't break it. Don't totally. break it. So it's just going to look like regular ROV video. And then uh, we've got the ability with the Telestrator, for instance, just to draw a simple thing on screen, like pick up that rock or I'm looking for this fish. Or I or, want you to go yeah, there. No, over here. <laughs> no, no. No, I said here. And uh, yeah, that's good for marking the seafloor. We also have a, yeah. Um, Freeze and zoom. Freeze and zoom is oh, great. Love yeah. it. Even one with a point, so like that organism right there, you can see what it was. And then uh, AJ's very good with the, you know, come around here and go behind there. <laughs> that's yeah. that's very good. There we go. <laughs> a little wink. Yeah. So yeah. that's the. Uh, oh, oh, there's oh, something over that? there. Yeah, there was, was actually something over there. That was odd. I that was no joke. Was. Maybe come Too back bad we were, we're back to playing okay. instead it was of just doing a science. Of it, yeah. <laughs> some, that's some been very thing. handy. Tina Four or something. Uh, AJ's. Oh, there it is. That thing. It's coming back in. Right? Oh, okay. there it is. What is Whoop. that? Oh, maybe Zooming it's something around. very small, very close to the camera. <laughs> right. That would make sense. I'm ready. I'm ready when it comes. Our dedicated shore support noted as oh this yeah. is a copepoda. Whatever this is. Copa oh, a copepod. Copepod. Hey, copepod. If you watch Finding Nemo. Was there a copepod right? in there? Cop oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I guess it's Finding Dory. Oh, oh, oh. there's something there. Little Not seen it. Shrimp is shrimp. Yeah. Copepods are a uh, type of zooplankton, and they are the filter feeding whales. They're the main, one of the main food sources for them. So some of the largest creatures eat some of the smallest creatures. It's pretty neat. Does anybody in here speak whale? You want to bump the craft on and off? Yep. You asked. Because I knew that would happen. <laughs> it's my bedtime. I get silly when I'm tired. Would you like to um, share the silliest creature we've seen? Um, it was a question that came in a few minutes ago. I don't know if it's with the silliest animal. It's, I mean, it's probably at the top of most people's list, that googly-eyed squid. I, oh, I yeah. think the combination oh. of it oh. and the reaction of the control van. Silliest hmm. moment on Nautilus. <laughs> I wonder if that was some ink from a squid that just came across the screen. Some kind of colonial organism. Does anyone else want to weigh in on their creature feature? Silliest creature. Silliest creature. Headless chicken monster. Oh yeah, <laughs> the headless, the headless chicken. Um, that's pretty silly. Yeah, it's a holothurian that kind of someone named and it's stuck. <laughs> Uh, there was a pretty terrifying one. Siphonophore? <coughs> Some type terrifying. of, um, I don't know, I gotta look it up to get the name right. It was, it was a type of isopod, I think, which are already scary enough. Oh, I know. I have a photo of that one. The name of it the was, I, an isopod? It was isopod? a worm, wasn't it? Flatworm? That one? Mm, no. Well, I don't know what you're thinking of, but... I can show you. I have it here. We saw um, at the whale fall dive. There were a bunch of sea pigs. Oh yeah, there. Right, and they're echinoderms, I believe. Uh, we've brought down real pigs before. Yes, we have. For forensics yeah. uh, experiment. That was in uh, Saanich Inlet, though, I believe, right? Ed? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. Dan, you were there too. Yeah. Okay, it was called a... Uh, that one every year, I believe. Scale worm? Monopsis scale worm? isopod. Monopsis isopod. We saw one pretty... Rennie, how do you spell that? Uh, M-U-N-N-O-P-I-S. Monopsis isopod. Okay. And they're not... 
These don't look Ooh. too scary, but when they're on the seafloor, kind of looking, we, I was like, is that a Pictocoded? We didn't really know what it was, if it was a sea spider or something, but then, I don't know, if you look at some of these. Some of the pictures are yeah, pretty gnarly. Pretty gnarly looking. No, thank you. Swimming isopod. Can we, so we uh, can we start streaming early? Uh, yeah, everything's coming from the same direction. We can do that. Um, I'll never get around there with this thing. Yeah. In this current state. Okay. I wonder if you could develop mine. This is a question for Dan. An ROV with sweep wings, like they have on the jets that land on the aircraft carriers, that can sweep forward and back, not up. And then deploy wings, and then tow the vehicle, you know, come ahead at half a knot. Yeah. Two knots. <laughs> and have the speed of the vessel enable the ROV to ascend faster. Wouldn't that be sweet? I'm gonna have to. If you look up the wire flyer vehicle, they have something huh. that, that climbs yeah. up and down the wire and it has these wings that tilt just like you were saying. Yeah. Bridge, and just yeah. a slight tilt of it right. will cause them to shoot like uh, uh, Can we track, track a line forward at the ship's wire. current heading, uh, which looks like a good re recovery heading? And we'll go, and we'll go speed 0 0.3 knots. Thank you. And it's specifically designed to be hydrodynamic, so a lot of modeling and simulation done to design the shape of it. Oh, there's a copepod. Yeah. Helicopter. Hey, ROV, a couple uh, instrument notes. If you sure. want to, uh, you can power down the McLean. I got everything I needed off that instrument. Roger. Thing. And um, just interested in the uh, ground fault value on the CTD currently. Ground fault value on the CTD remains. We need, to, uh, we need to look at that. Um. 98K. Yeah. 90K? Yeah. Okay. So not terrifying, but we should do an inspection of the connectors probably. We really should because what's happening there, that's masking. Uh, if we had a ground fault on the vehicle, we we wouldn't be able to detect it. Cause, oh, okay. Yeah, so we try and have no ground faults try. And if there is one on a, you know, critical device, we would we would catch it and be able to disable it or uh, yeah, decide whether we need it on or off, or if it's a hard ground fault, we can yeah turn it on for a minute if we need it, and then turn it back off, so it's less likely to destroy the connector or the bulkhead. Right. So I'll do a visual on all the connectors then, and maybe uh, ohm out from the housing of the instrument to each of the pins, and see if we can see a connection. Yeah, that particular, if that's the same CTD we had last time, it also... Had a, I remember <laughs> cleaning every single one of those connectors on on the thing, and uh, I don't know if we ever did rectify it or not. Or I, yeah, I can't remember. It, it might have been one of the interconnect cables that we didn't have a spare for. We might be able to scavenge some parts off another recovered CTD or a spare. Yeah. Uh, swap the cables out, even a bulkhead connector, if we had to. Yeah. You know, it's not a huge, it's in the, as long as there's a K in there somewhere, I think. <laughs> Times 1,000, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know, you do the math, yeah, 100 K, 24 volts. The math on V equals IR? Yeah. It's on a, uh, what is that circuit? It's a couple amps at least, so I can take it. You have to come a little faster, I think, Jake. Cool. We're streaming well. Uh, hey, Rennie. Yes. Just something I've been curious about. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Where? What did? What's your background in to do this work? Uh, uh circuitous, <laughs> as as is most everyone's answer <laughs> on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> Why is Ed laughing? <laughs> <laughs> Been watching you navigate over there. 
How'd you get on this boat? <laughs> yeah, who <laughs> let you on this? That was not what I meant. Who are you related to? <laughs> the question is, how do you get off of it? That's yeah, that's, that's more like it. <laughs> we get um, off the boat in 16 yeah. days. I, uh, well, I was no working on a master's in, uh, in geography, focusing on remote sensing and um, geospatial information science. And I worked on land processes, um, geomorphology. So I was looking more in the cryosphere between high latitudes, anything high latitudes or high altitudes where there's permanent ice year round um, oh. so I did some work on sea ice and then I was doing some work in um, on rock glaciers in the Andes and other glacial features um, but the technology I was using was lidar which people nowadays are I, I kind of like most people are familiar with it they're starting to become more familiar because it's used in uh, self you know self-driving cars and um, people have lidars on their phone etc but um, it kind of ramped up, uh, you know, the, as everything happens, it gets cheaper over time and right. more ubiquitous. But at the time we were using LIDAR to, um, to, to, to assess interannual change of these rock glaciers and how they're moving and whether or not there's, w what the ice content looks like. Um, I was in the Andes doing that. And then uh, there was a call, there was an email sent out um, about an internship on Nautilus, and I um, saw that they were looking for people to work with their new multi-beam sonar. Um, and I didn't do anything with oceanography or sonar at the time, but the end products of LIDAR and some of the concepts are, are, kind of are this similar to multi-beam sonar. So LIDAR is lasers in air, so you're getting, but you're still, still getting distance measurements. It's still time of flight except it's speed of light. And then uh, sonar is uh, is a time of flight of an acoustic pulse through water and then uh, it bouncing off of something and receiving it. So the end product, the technology is very similar. The concept is similar. And then the end product is very similar of these point clouds of data. So I said, I'd like to have an internship in that. and. Um, I came out in 2013 on Nautilus and uh, was swiftly chained to the deck. Uh oh, <laughs> and <then laughs> <No>. been here <laughs> ever since. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I just over time uh, was finishing up, uh, finishing up the degree there, and really liking the work and kind of the contracting lifestyle. And I like, I really like going to sea. And uh, now I do this as a career. So been coming out every year since then. So did you wrap up the masters too? I did. I finished that, yeah. Still on the Andy stuff. Yes, that was my thesis work. Right on. Very cool. And so with the geography and stuff, mm -hmm. but then when you get into all the physics of how the instruments work, yeah, I that's guess you're doing a big crossover of subjects. Remote sensing is kind of like that. There is, yeah. it's it's kind of a, a has a reach in a lot of disciplines, um, and then you know, kind of where you land on that depends on your individual expertise or or really you know what you're doing for your work and what it requires. So having a little bit of knowledge about a bunch of things in that in that sphere, and then doing the deep sea stuff over time is like you know being able to identify deep sea creatures or yeah, you're know enough good about at that. the ROV systems to say there's a problem over there but not know anything about it or how to fix it but just to <laughs> be able to say you know an alert goes up um, that's kind of and then so yeah so I do the seafloor mapping on on Nautilus and um, subsea nav is my is primary stuff and I started out uh, first couple of years the mapping was more tied to the science department, so I was working in the wet lab as well, and I had worked in a in labs prior to that, so it was kind of like lab management wasn't too foreign either. So, but you also do deck work, and you figure out how to I get these work. sensors mounted to the vessel and deployed for dives, and yeah. if you're watching ROV yeah. operations when you're navigating. And yeah, lot. everyone does a little bit of everything out here. That's right. That's kind of the bonus. I never thought with my career path that I'd be able to 
operate cranes, but you know, that's kind of like we all pitch in and do stuff. And that's a huge bonus for me. I like I like doing that kind of stuff. That's the latest, right. some of the latest tech for the uh, subsea light right now. Oh, nice. No more metrology. Yeah, I wonder what their um, their free uh, their wavelength is. Um, the one what he was telling me about is they have some proprietary stuff going on there, the logarithm and the equipment, mm -hmm. but they are. Um, being used now for commercial metrology. Yeah, it's kind of crazy how far, like I was saying with the LIDAR, it's like the terrestrial LIDAR we had was God knows how many hundreds of thousands that was, and it was really like, you know, we had the only one within <laughs> a certain area, yeah. you know, and then it kind of over time, now I can have one on my phone and can walk through a room. It's <laughs> obviously not as good as the one, but, you know, it's, you know, the subsea stuff is ab about there now, yeah. There's one that's actually useful and it's expensive and proprietary. And yeah. Imagine a couple more years you'll have them on the... They'll be everywhere. Well, thanks for that, Rennie. Sure. And team. That's really cool. We should get one, though, Rennie. She rent one and put it on Hercules. It could yeah. become full circle. Yeah, from the <laughs> Roman stuff. That yeah. was like some of the early days of the, the laser, yeah. laser yeah. mapping. And for me, yeah, that'd be... <laughs> You've been lighter Have you metrology of, a, of a, some of these structures would be... Yeah, that'd be cool. Have you done any Norbit mapping action. on cruises this year? Uh, we had it on and we did. tested it, made sure it worked and everything. And we found a uh, pile of rocks that was supposed to be a submarine. What? That was pretty cool. Yeah, that was. It was cool to know, you know, moments before we descended on it that it was not going to be what we thought, <laughs> <laughs> or what they identified as a target. You know, possible target. A possible target. But it was also Wait, like. Wait. So it ended up being a submarine, or it ended up being a rock field? It was, it, was it was a rock. It was a rock. But it was, it was, you know, we scanned over it and it was like, oh, because it was like a lot of energy of like looking for this thing. And <coughs> yeah. Chris and Terry and the UH have been submarine hunting for decades. Oh, yeah. And they have all this information and, you know, they know all the stories of where the subs were and how they were where lost. Where the bolts came from. the ships. <laughs> the ships. Ships and submarines. But they seem to have a fasc fascination with submarines. Uh. So they had all these theories of why it was where it was. and I was on a vessel in the Gulf of Mexico once, and we mapped overnight and saw a wreck on the seafloor, and you could see the bow and the length. And it was like a 45-foot vessel, and you could see the stern and the ribs running from port to starboard, etc. And uh, we were very excited. We dove down on it, and it was a spool of wire that the boat had thrown overboard. That just happened to just play out. Like, yeah. It laid out exactly perfectly like, that. like a ship. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. The ceiling. Such a. But that's the nature of exploration. Roger. I think I saw him put the poles out. I wasn't paying attention. Dan, that new cam wire working for you? Yeah. Good. Yeah, it's perfect. <coughs> We've been watching the uh, sunset in it. Do we ever get that lumpus out of the winch cable? The big lumpus? Uh, no. No. I think that was, um, yeah. What's that? I was like, I think I see it, but. Yeah, it's still there. Okay. It's, uh, I didn't remember exactly how big of a lumpus it was. Or over it. Yeah, it's right here. Yeah. That's likely some uh, turns in the cable. Where the depth we spun it out at. See a professional opinion of the 
see Lars guy. Right. I know we're ascending. Herc is at uh, 584 meters, and we still have some listeners. We got folks in the United States, Canada, Italy, New Zealand, and France listening in on us right now. I guess we weave some interesting stories, know, folks. That's a short list. We could probably say hello in all those native languages. I think that's probably just English and French, though. <laughs> if I was paying attention. Well, and I guess there's multiple languages in each country, yeah. so. But that's cool. Um, just a note on the camera that shows the winch on board. There seems to be a gap in the wire. Is there, that a problem? There Not is no. indeed a gap Not in the wire. That's very astute this observation. One there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, we're just discussing. That is. Yeah, that's a issue. Thing. Is that a problem? Yeah. Thank you for pointing it out. No, it's not a problem. It's a known issue. There's another one there. I didn't know that one. Uh, Is that a new one? The one on the left? That this one in there? Uh, it's right. Like six there. there. Yeah, that's new. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. It'll come back out. It's not a problem until there's a um, problem. Yeah, if it stacks up and gets two or three deep, then the cable can get trapped behind there. But uh, with this particular winch, because it's a storage winch, there's only a ton or so on there. Yeah, a certain amount of tension, right? Yeah, it's not like a direct drive winch. That makes sense. Winch. I never thought about that, where the storage winch, you could theoretically, you know, you dial back the pressure, couldn't you? If you wanted. I'm sure there's a limit with that much. Yeah, I don't know if the, uh, the uh, traction winch, if you just put more wraps, or you know what I mean, more, that's five uh, strands, I think. Um, or if it's, you change how much tension it's putting on there. I don't know. This is Josh and JC question. What? Sure. Jacob, can you tell me if Atalanta's auto heading is on for some reason? I believe it is not, but okay. yes, it's off. It's just Herc's not tugging hard enough then? I don't think Dan had any forward way on, so. That's okay. We're, we know have forward way with the ship. We're, we're, we're our main concern will be getting. Yeah, yeah. We don't need any forward way. We might need to lateral as we get closer to the surface just to get in the pocket you know I, I know so I mean we can treat it like that vehicle it just takes longer that's all it's just patience there's not anything I'm going to do any different to fix it the, 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 when things what happens is when people start to adjust it to make it to try to fix a short-term problem rather than just being patient, it ends up making compounding more problems. So, so to wait it out for the, for this instance. Yeah, sure. Oh, we crossed. Did we just cross 24 hours on this dive? I think we did. Started four. I believe we did. Yeah. I have it somewhere here. Yeah. I started 602 recording. UTC is when we started. Oh, no. Really? No. 421. 417. I started yeah, recording. Four, four, yep. Yep. Yay, Herc. Longest dive is up in the 70-some hours. 
Yeah, was on that one. You were there too, right? <laughs> was that the one where we put the RV in the water? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I think so. I don't recall it. There was one where we didn't we didn't get it back. <laughs> one. <laughs> oh, us. Yeah. Yeah, maybe one. Yeah, that was. A was that your fault? No. Yes, it was no, my it was fault. No, it was not. It was Ed's my fault. fault. Yeah, no, that was uh, hey. just happenstance. <laughs> nope, but I was present for it. That uh, it's it's a rare, but not uh, you know not wildly unusual occurrence in ROVs. It's, a it's got two tethers, though, right? Like it's got it's got one to uh, Atalanta, and then right? a uh, connection between Atalanta. And Hercules, sometimes called an umbilical. Um, so if you lose the connection between the vessel and Atalanta, yeah. the clump weight for any ROV operator, the clump weight will drop to the sea floor and the ROV will be suspended above it like a tr person holding a balloon. Right. Yeah. If you lose the connection between the clump weight, if you have one, and the ROV, the ROV, we work to always keep that positively buoyant, so it will slowly come to the surface, eventually come to the surface and have various ways of detecting and recovering it. So um, do we have a clump weight on Herc right now? Uh, Atalanta serves as a clump weight right. to decouple Herc from the motion of the vessel at the surface. So Atalanta, in, this, in essence... It's a very high-tech clump uh, weight. It's, it's a <laughs> clump weight or a camera sled, but it serves the same function. Okay, so then is that a good thing? Yeah, there's pros and cons about all different ways of doing ROVs. We use a two-vehicle solution. So the, the big pro about that is we get this helicopter view of our operations yeah. when we're working in the hazardous area. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Uh, that's super helpful. And we get very, you know, when it's a non-hazardous area, it's still helpful because we see what's around us and what we can go investigate. Is there an overhang? Is there substrate? All of those things. Um, uh, and there's there's downsides as well, and there's also you know there's other ways of doing ROVs with uh, cages or tether management systems, and you can even use an ROV by itself and use a catenary to decouple it from the motion of the vessel at the surface. You put a, two totes worth of floats at various places along the line when you deploy, and that creates the line goes all the way down and then becomes buoyant for a range and then goes back down to the RV. So as a vessel bounces around, it just moves that curve. Right. It doesn't affect the ROV, but you could take up the weight and then lift things with the ROV as Dan was describing earlier. So pros and cons of each. I industry typically uses a caged or ROV or a TMS system. Uh, and some are hybrid. Um, Jason from Woods Hole can work in a two-vehicle or a single-vehicle solution. That's a change they did about, I don't know, five years ago. This is... So this is interesting. Wikipedia is telling me that Atalanta means equal in weight. Which is interesting because compared Bridge to Argus, now. it is not. <laughs> I think there's a Greek reference though. That yes. Hello, we'd like to secure tanks, enable air to tuggers, and we'll have the captain on the bridge. Let me know when he's up there. Okay, thank you. But perhaps of all these amazing ROV engineering tasks, I think my favorite recent engineering task by far has got to be the repair of the ice machine today. So you maintain heading? <laughs> That's massive. You maintain that heading? Quality of life impact. Change bearing? Morale. <laughs> yep. That's Huge. the answer. We have ice for days now. <laughs> 
Did you know it was fixed? Yes, I saw it. Ice Cube. You're the easiest talk show host, guest <laughs> ever. Uh, Ed. Yeah, <laughs> I, I depend on that ice. It's it's been uh, a sad six day or whatever number of days since it passed. So what do you need ice for? I have ice right here. It keeps these beverages nice. You know, four hour watch. Yeah. I don't have tea up here. My True. I, I just yeah. don't like things cold. So I'm not a big ice yeah. fan. Yeah, the, those two things go hand in hand. <laughs> they do. <laughs> <sighs> kind of blows my mind that people out there are listening to us. <laughs> Well, there's no guarantee about that. Yeah. Well, that's true. That count, <laughs> Thanks, that count just indicates how many devices are connected. It doesn't necessarily mean <laughs> Who's actually there's listening humans to gathered around each device. If somebody walks off to bake bread, <laughs> it still shows up on your list. Oh, well, thanks for bursting well, that up here, it is, you know, coming up on 6 in the morning and yeah, just made up. Uh, various it. places in the EU. So yeah, maybe cool. nobody's got anything going on. Yeah. Canada Day, they're gonna. That's a good thing. No, is it Canada Day or is it BC Day where no, the symphony no. plays in the harbor? Yeah. Uh, what do you think I'm making that Canada up Day. In my head. Uh, that's quite nice. Was in Victoria. Yeah, in Victoria. Yeah. Yeah, that's yep. really cool. That's it. Symphony Splash, I think Actually, it's called. If you look that's at it, yeah. I'll buy that. Uh, these ones up here. Your opportunity to sink two. an oboe player. See how if it goes down. One. <laughs> it's because. It's one day and five hours, 59 minutes. Watch this. <laughs> you don't get many opportunities. If you were going like 0.1 that. knots at, to go 10 kilometers. I think there's but some there, people on this line calling. trying to do work. <laughs> yeah. well. Go ahead, Bridge. They've already shut us off. Captain on the bridge. Roger, thank you. We are at 273 meters ascending, so just a couple more minutes. Thank you. Ready, we still stopping at 7.5? Roger, stopping at 7.5. We have affirmation from Science Party Land that people listen to us while they're cleaning their lab. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah? Uh, my wife will actually listen when I'm out at sea, and she has it very low. She's just listening <laughs> for when we all get excited. <laughs> and then she, like, switches over to that tab to see what we found or what we're doing. Is that is that living with Ed advice? Uh, Always listen know. on low. I don't know. Yes. Oh man. <laughs> Always is listen it ever on low. Someone six years or whatever. Can you try some lateral? I mean, otherwise it will be true that it will be like dead. You know. We have other folks spinning yarn while they oh, listen to us. Oh, cool. Yeah. We've had a couple We're spinning some yarn here too. Big on uh, <laughs> knitting. Yeah. Uh, knitting at sea. Knitting. Uh, deep sea creatures out of yarn. So the way that this current is at the surface here should correct it anyway CFs once you're up there, but sometimes deck will be a little freaked out with it being back on the starboard side. Renny, do you want us to be quiet so you can no, do No, I work? can just stop listening to you at some okay. at any point. <laughs> I can also stop talking on this channel if you want to have, you know. No, no, we're good. Okay. Yeah, no, no worries. I don't mind as long as you don't mind. I don't mind. All right. We're better than XM radio. I like this. And freer. <laughs> yeah, my favorite knitting is uh, Wallace and Gromit. Oh, there you go. Claymation. Yep. And uh, Gromit. Was that done knits? by Will Vinton Studios in Portland? Ardman. No, UK no? Ardman. Oh, okay. Yeah. Love that stuff. Claymation. Yeah, it's changing, though. Keep the turning path the a spring bit. until it shoots across the room. It'll, you know, like I said, even if it's dead vehicle at the top, dead-ish, you know, we can get it in the pocket. So for folks who are listening, we are... But this is preferable to doing crazy ship stuff because the crazy ship stuff takes longer. And so there's like a patience involved in it. So that's my ability. Yeah. Do what you want. <laughs> we've we've got some repairs to do on Herc. Um, we're in the middle of a dive for Ocean Canada. 
as part of the maintenance and exploration expedition. Yeah, right. I think we're okay. And I think we're uh, going to be in the pocket. We're coming up after a captain's up there. Yeah. Long, twenty-four hour. Actually, we're past the twenty-four hour mark. Yeah. Dive. Okay. Well. Yeah, it could be if you've got a strong uh, wind a beam that, that you can't really do some of the fancy stuff, which gets into what is the weather. Oh, and other folks are working on art Ooh. while they they listen to us. This is good. We will uh, continue the dive. We've got a number of objectives still um, to complete for this dive plan. Yeah, so we'll have a new dive number, save dive, save dive plan, and we'll get back down there and knock that out. Yeah. We're going to locate um, um, sediment traps and the, the deep acoustic lander, which is kind of cool, designed by a professor at um, University of Dalhousie, which is neat. Oh, where's that? In Canada. No kidding. Eh? Yeah, pretty good. So, uh, well. Nova Scotia. Oh, right. Yeah. That's about as far north as we are. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. That's just about even. Uh, what other kinds of things we've got? Uh, we can do a little bit more um, plume sampling, I think, as well. So we'll be heading back down and... Ooh, people want to know about how we fix Herc. Um, that will not be aired live, mm. I don't think. Well, maybe. Maybe? Might be on one of the deck cameras. I don't know if they're going to pull it in. I kind of doubt it. Yeah. Yeah, so I think you can, you can watch it from one of the deck cams um, in terms of hearing it. Nope. Nope, but... Uh, which is good. <laughs> Which is good. <laughs> um, but check in with the... Uh, oh, there you go. Oh, jelly, 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 jelly. Yeah, check in with the um, the team who are on the next next watch. Oh, I don't know how long it'll, oh, yeah, 10 o'clock. Yeah, it'll be next watch. So um, we're on page 16 of our 18-page dive plan. So close. So, so close, yet so far. Isn't it true, though, when you get to the end of anything you're reading, you get interrupted? Yeah, well... Someone is asking if we visited Rover this dive. I'm not sure what Rover uh, is. Wally, probably. Oh, right, yeah. Wally is not um, connected to this node. Jeb, where's Wally? Wally's uh, in one of our shops at the Marine Technology Center. Oh. Yeah, so um, next time you're chatting with AJ, he can fill you in on all the details. He's our AJ guy. <laughs> he is our AJ guy. Oh boy, he's the one and only AJ. I'm gla guy. glad Dirk's, Dirk's not here to roast me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've seen better, but uh, no, uh, he's the Wally guy. He and our uh, Sergio, uh, electrical engineering yeah. colleague, uh, Wally was uh, lost control of one of the um, tracks. Tracks, yeah. Right. And uh, so we brought it back. I uh, got it partially disassembled, and uh, working with the designers and the. Um, Stencils. Build, <laughs> the builders over in Germany to get some new parts, get it installed and uh, refurbished. 100 meters payout. It's up on blocks right now, missing one, one of its tracks. And when is that going to get dropped? <laughs> <laughs> we have an interesting deployment technique for that uh, oh. system. Uh, there's a quick release titanium loop at the top of its frame that we didn't realize, didn't know about. And uh, Ed probably has a more graphic account of the uh, the deployment. But a while ago, bloop. Yeah, not far from the surface, landed upright and in the right place. Yeah. Oh, no oh, way. Yeah. Saved us a ton of time. time. Still working, too. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, that, that were a few horseshoes. Mm -hmm. 
Is that waiting for September, you think? Uh, I couldn't, couldn't say. It yeah. looks like there's a bit of work to do before September, right. so I, I'm imagining next Monday. year probably. Yeah. Right um, on. And the, the cool thing about Wally mm -hmm. is uh, Wally is actually controlled by a, a scientist, right? That's right. Yep. Yeah. The principal investigator, their students, they can control it from their desktop just through like a web browser. Um, when we were doing troubleshooting, AJ and I were in our office and connecting to it subsea and watching the video, which right. is kind of novel to be controlling a little, uh, you know, mobile unit at the bottom of the ocean, hundreds of kilometers away. So cool. Yeah. And and it does um, um, gas hydrate sampling. That that's the purpose of Wally. It can be configured for that. Um, it also holds a CTD for conductivity, temperature, depth, um, a little uh, ADCP for current monitoring, lights and camera. Um, it's uh, a platform that, to some extent, oh, you can that. modify the instrumentation that sits on it. Yeah. Right on. All stop, seven five meters. There was some talk about uh, moving it to uh, a whale fall location and uh, for vis visual surveys of that. Coming up. All right. And where, where do we have Wally typically um, plugged in? Wally's usually at uh, Barkley. Okay. Um, I believe you're right. It's the hydrates site. Um, Wally Land is the informal Wally name, Land. The kind of route that it takes with the markers, so you can find your way around. Right on. Navigate the seafloor. And if you if you go to OceanNetworks.ca, you can check that out. Roger. Uh, stopping sonars can also find it on our YouTube channel. There's a great video of Wally. Okay, secure. Number of great videos of Wally. It's funny how long I watched that over the years, the um, stopping the sonar business. Figuring out that you gotta stop that before you do the other like that was never part of it. It was just like why are these sonars always <laughs> busted? <laughs> Every time you gotta restart everything. <laughs> So pilots, what do you think? Can I can I make a note that Hercules is heading to the shop on our status? What was that? That's Her a Marley question, I think. That's a sorry? Marley maybe? Oh Marley. Yeah. Oh, okay. I will check with Marley on that. Thank you. Oh Mal and I. I couldn't figure out how, how Yeah, that no, was. it took me a second too. Yeah. I was like she looks like a deckhand on another vessel I work on. I was like, wait. On the Thompson it? No. Oh. Uh, uh, oh, I know. Uh, it's a U.S. government vessel. Do you uh, do much work with uh, UW uh, these days? No. I haven't been out on Thompson since the midlife refit. Are they primarily working with Jason still? No, they're a vessel of convenience, so any researcher can hire them and choose their choice of platforms to work with. Mix and match. Different. Yeah, mix and match. Mm -hmm. um, th th they did the midlife, and then they were all over the world doing a ton of work in Australia and South Africa. Um, uh, they've been in the Northwest recently, and then they have Newport. Mm -hmm. And there's, uh, there's actually more vessels coming online now, but we can chat about that after the dive. Oh, there's Josh, doing a little dance. Joined by Dan. Van, deck, 
have eyes on uh, Herc, uh, just a little bit to starboard of the center of the A-frame. Copy, thank you. I mean, come on, that's that's still in the A-frame now. Yeah, that's a, what is that he talking counts. about? Can we split in hairs here. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit to starboard, you sure. The post. We'll fix it in post. There's the bottom of the ship, creeping up in Atalanta view. So, no more USPLs. Ignore that. Don't even look at that. It's not even there anymore. I'm going to close it. There you go. We still have Telem on the caption, so. What? Uh, I'm showing telemetry for Atlanta still. Oh, there it goes. Now it's dead. Oh, yeah. Don't look at that. It's jellyfish. And we got a deck crew, man. Flying V formation. That's a great <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like I'm sure all the people on cover are fish eye view. Oh, I see, because we have people training on the tuggers that are standing one one back. That makes sense. Great job, Jake. Great job. Yeah, I happen to notice that Dan's ROV is already on the deck, so if you could... <laughs> You could hurry up with yours. <laughs> it's funny that we're at 10 o'clock and it's still late. Yeah, I see that already. And van back deck, can you have Herc drive forward, please? Copy. Drive forward. Oh, he must have the lines on already. He wants to tighten them up before he ratchet straps. Yeah. Yank it. We don't have enough swell to do that. <laughs> I think he's realizing that there's 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 low enough. Not now. Not now, because he's also he's back there. So. So retrieving Herc is kind of an interesting process. We've got to. What do you got to do? Fly the. Going to FSPL. Herc a little bit closer, and then how? Someone's asking how we hook it on. How we hook Hercules on? Yeah. Well, we're about to watch it, so yeah. we have a <laughs> stay tuned. We have a lift line that is uh, secured to the top of Hercules, and then it's actually paired to the the yellow umbilical, the yellow tether, all the way to Argus, and it's got um, a daisy chained kind of a secondary line connecting it to that uh, tether. So that's from the moment we dive to the moment we recover. Right. And right now, what uh, deck? boss is doing back there is he's uh, undoing that daisy chain line so we can part that um, in which case the the lift line which is the purple line will be separate from the tether and then you can just reel in 
that purple line with a, a winch. This case, it's on a crane. Okay. Um, and then as we do that, um, we'll be able to lift Hercules from the top, a bale on the top. So kind of like a D-ring on the top of Hercules. But the person who's got to do the daisy chain, which looks like is Mal and I today, um, has a lot of uh, hauling in to do, especially with this 50 meter um, tether. There's uh, a lot more than 50 meters of daisy chain in there to, to pull in in order to separate those two lines. Or the line in the umbilical, rather. That's Mike pulling it in? Uh, no, that's Mal and I. Uh, Mike is at the aft. <clears throat> He's handed the lift line oh. to somebody to, who's tied it, tied that lift line in to the crane's existing line, and now the crane's winch will haul in. And if there's no... Van, van, back deck, you guys can go ahead and start getting Hercules in a position. Copy. What do you want to do there? Seems like, go what do we want, farther? Yeah. You're kind of, you're fine for now. Yeah, don't worry about that. Yeah. Yeah, there was, a, that looked good to me, so I was like. Uh, yeah. And so, if you watch in the Hercules butt cam, which we don't have a very good view of right now, but you can actually see that daisy chain being pulled off, which will separate those two lines. So that's just hauling in all the way from from the deck all the way down. And other, other ROVs have different ways of solving that um, problem, other two-part ROVs. How old is this ship? Ship was uh, 1967. All right, so all of this, uh, the ROV equipment and stuff has been added. Yeah, yeah, much later. It yeah. was, this ship is, was, I think, in the Baltic. Oh, there we go. Let's see if there's a wrap or not. And somewhere on the nautiluslive.org site, you can actually see a full, um, what do you call it? Like a 3D tour of the ship. It's, it's pretty wicked cool. Ed, you probably helped make that. Was that Jacob? So we're concluding our dive for the next little while here. We have a few more objectives to come back to. This is Expedition NA-151. We're in the Northeast Pacific Ocean, exploring the Endeavour uh, vent field. just bringing Hercules home for a nap. Herc has been working for over 24 hours. And when we switch over to the uh, thirty meter tether, it's gonna this it's gonna seem so short <laughs> after working with this for a while. Van Van Deck. Go go ahead. Go ahead and have Hercules drive back aft. Uh, we have a wrap in the tether. Copy wrap in the tether driving aft. They didn't spot that till a while later. Did you copy that, Jake? Yeah, Roger. It's a little bit of a late spot. We gotta have a f flashlight on that thing. Are
I still have forward way on the ship, just FYI. Here, I can put this one over there if you want. That one if you want. Headings three zero zero. Yeah, it looks like you're inverse, yeah. And deck, uh, go ahead and hold Hercules there, please. Copy. Oh, yeah. If folks are tuning in to Science Party Land, we are just uh, wrapping up a dive with Ocean Networks Canada and OET. Herc is heading in for a little bit, and we've got more work to do to explore the Endeavour Hydrothermal Vent Area, the Northeast Pacific Ocean here.
This is a science expedition and maintenance of the Ocean Networks Canada infrastructure on the seafloor. You can learn all about it at oceannetworks.ca. <coughs> He's going to try to sort that thing out. It's going to be a difficult. The old flip. Yeah, I would do that on the other side when you're behind the rail. Otherwise, it'll tug you. Back deck. Go for van. Go ahead and have Hercules drive ahead, please. Roger, will do. You copy, Jake. Driving ahead. Get that float. You gotta yank it. Tempro. Van deck, go ahead and have her cold there. Holding. Pull it in. Flip it over. Is it over again? Not like twist, I just mean like doubled, you know. Pull. Floop. Nope. You got auto heading on. And uh, Hercules is ten meters from the from the transom. Copy. I think that's tape. That last bit. Must have rigged it for a 24 hour dive. <laughs> and deck, uh, Hercules is past the transom. Copy. There we go.
Tech control, power secure. Roger, Hercules is now clear of the water.